Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about breast cancer in Native Americans and Alaska Natives. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We are always putting out new content. And if you're interested in learning about what treatment options might be available to you, I'd love to invite you to go to yerba.com to get your personalized report. Native Americans and Alaskan Natives suffer great disparities in everything from life expectancy to how much they make per dollar made by non-Hispanic white men to all-cause mortality, and that's the same case for breast cancer as well. We've talked in other videos about disparities among other groups, and as often happens, Native Americans are left out of the conversation, and this video is meant to correct that. This is not going to be a deep review of all the cultures in all the Native American federally recognized tribes, but just to speak about what we know about breast cancer in Native populations. Breast cancer in people who are Native American or Alaska Natives tends to present earlier in life, to be more aggressive, to be diagnosed at later stage, and is often underdiagnosed, meaning that people's diagnoses are neglected, and that's due to multiple reasons. Being a minoritized population in the United States puts you at risk of a great deal of harm, including poverty, bias, stereotypes, and violence. And breast cancer sort of fits in there. If we think about lifelong stress, being a member of a marginalized community is a source of lifelong stress, and this is why we may see earlier onset diagnosis in Native Americans with breast cancer. We see this with other cancers as well, colon cancer and lung cancer. Diagnoses are earlier in life, and they tend to be more biologically aggressive, where the cells are dividing more quickly. Triple negative cancers are more common in Native women as well. Again, there are a host of reasons that this is the case that we're not going to go to in this video, but it's important to put this out there. If you have triple negative breast cancer and you're not Native American, we see you as well. It's just important to know that it's not because of your racial background that you have triple negative breast cancer. And it's also not the case that every breast cancer in a Native person is triple negative. These are really risk factors. How we think about risk factors is there's an increase in risk. It's not deterministic. It's not if this, then this. So with that aside, we know that people who are Native American are less likely to be diagnosed in a timely fashion, and that's in part because a lot of Native people live in rural areas where access to basic primary care like mammography is, is le it's less available. And so Native people have to travel a longer distance to be able to get their mammogram. That's going to be the same case in any Native, sorry, that's going to be the case in any rural population, of course, but when we combine distrust of the healthcare system due to historical practices with the distance, with insurance issues, these things are just additive, and it can make it harder for people to get their annual mammogram. There's another thing about insurance, and whether you're Native or not, this is the case that you can't get a mammogram unless you have breast cancer more often than once every 365 days. So a lot of amazing efforts have been made to have mobile mammography units in rural areas. Let us know if you live in one of those areas and if you have had a mobile mammography van come to your neighborhood. If the van comes one day earlier this year than it did last year, insurance won't pay for that mammogram without a letter being written, sort of appealing the situation. And if you are in a rural area and you get your health care not with the same provider every year, that can be really difficult. There are things that can be done. There are groups that can help you get your mammogram one day earlier than a year rather than waiting till the next time the van comes around. Take that opportunity if mobile mammography is available to have that mammogram even if it is just within a year from the last one. It is worth mentioning that culture plays a great role in help seeking and the type of help people receive. When medical care is not culturally humble, 
I don't actually believe we're ever culturally competent. That's like you've achieved something and you can check the box. If the place you go is not culturally humble, you can feel stigmatized, disrespected, you can have your dignity violated, and care may not be aligned with the way you see your body and disease. It's really important to understand that our upbringing and the culture from which we come, even generations ago, can change how we view our bodies, how we can view our bodies when something isn't quite right, how we view illness and disease, and how we view seeking care. So, you know, for women, we're often used to taking care of other people, and to prioritize our own health care can be very difficult. That's sort of a cultural teaching that we've picked up over generations. And the same type of thing can happen with Native Americans and Alaska Natives. If there have been stories about health care not being aligned with our cultural or faith practices, you can see why it would make people less eager to seek out diagnosis and screening and treatment. And so it's really important to talk about cultural differences, not to say Native Americans have the wrong culture, but rather we need to increase cultural humility among clinicians, regardless of their race, ethnicity, gender, and culture. And one way to do that is to support more Native people going to medical school, going to nursing school, going to pharmacy school. We have a real crisis in cancer care with workforce shortages. And one way we can make sure that culturally humble and competent care can be delivered to people is by having more providers, more clinicians who look like them. That's been shown to improve the quality of care. And this is interesting. The more diversity there is among medical students, everybody benefits. The, the quality of care for white people goes up when there's more diversity of student voices and experiences. We also need to advocate for our brothers and sisters who are different from us. We have to recognize what we have that other people don't have, and we have to advocate and speak up. And if you're a member of a Native American, Alaska Native tribe, speaking up and finding allies can give you some hope that things can get better. You already know this, so I'm not going to in any way pretend I'm an expert, but maintaining hope can be an antidote to despair. Finally, we need to advocate with our politicians to increase funding for Native American health and health services and attention to Native American, Alaska Native populations. And we do this with, by voting, we do this by talking with our legislators, and we can do this no matter who we are or what we look like. I hope this video has been helpful or at least interesting. We love hearing from you, so drop a comment or question below. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.